It's Duncanville and South Oak Cliff. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Our triple header continues with Tom Luganbill, Jay Alter. We got Morgan Uber joining us on the sidelines in just a moment. Tom, we're, we're fortunate. We're trying to bring you a lot of top-level talent you'll, that you'll see in college football in the sure. coming years. But it's very rare that you get two programs on the same field with this much college-ready talent. Extremely rare. And, and really, you know, you got South Oak Cliff coming off of their first state championship in 2021. Duncanville on the other sideline has played in two consecutive state championships. You don't do that without a wealth of riches of talent. Now, how much wealth are we talking about here? Take a look at these numbers. Between these two rosters, 47 players are projected to play at either the Group of Five, Power Five, or the FCS level. That means virtually every position on the two deep across the board on both sides of the ball features a player that will be playing at the collegiate level. That just doesn't happen, folks. So we are in for a dandy here tonight. Jim. And 25 of those players have a power five projection. So out of those 25, if you had to pick one to look at tonight, who is it? I'd go with the ESPN 300 junior, all right? 2024 class defensive end, Colin Simmons. So explosive. You see to the top of your screen right there, you see him bend. He can run. He has length. He checks all the boxes athletically, and he's only about 225, 230 pounds. He's going to be 255 before you know it and be a real menace at the point of attack. You can see the natural skills as a pass rusher. You see him slow down here in the hole, not overrun the play. You see him down to the bottom of, the, of, the, of your screen there, playing off the block, scraping, shedding, making the tackle. So he can just about do it all for this Duncanville defense. We've got two programs that produce college football players and win a lot of games doing it. And Morgan, they're led by two head coaches that have a very special relationship. This is a relationship that goes back 30 plus years. Duncanville head coach Reginald Samples and South Oak Cliff head coach Jason Todd were actually connected before Todd was even born. Todd's grandfather was the principal at South Oak Cliff High School where Samples ended up going. And then years later, Todd ends up playing for Samples as a linebacker in high school. Todd's very first coaching job, Samples hired him. The two coached together at two different high schools for 14 seasons before Todd ended up taking the job at South Oak Cliff. And two of the biggest things that he learned from his mentor, hard work and discipline, which were two keys that led to that state title last season. Jay? Can flat out roll. Now he's not very big, but if he gets in the open field, it's going to be tough to run him down. This time Willis keeps it, rolls right, surveys the field. It's intercepted! First pass of the game going the other way. Taylor Starling, the senior safety who's committed to Colorado. What a start to this game. Well, I just mentioned trying to come up with explosive plays if you're Duncanville on offense versus his South Oak Cliff defensive secondary. And right there, Starling, one of those power five offered guys in the secondary making a huge play right out of the gate and setting up this offense with terrific field position. Committed to Colorado. Trey Walton, the quarterback, starting at the Duncanville 28-yard line. Not much going on that opening run. Tedrick Williams, the carry. Third and 18, pressure coming. Walton steps up in the pocket, delivers a strike right on the money. Not going to be enough for the first down. But Jamari Colley did make the grab. ESPN Junior 300 wide receiver. And I think you got more than enough yardage back to go for it on fourth here. Well, yeah, they got more than half of it back, and that's exactly what they're going to do, it looks like. Nope, they're gonna, looks like they're going to send out the kicking team here. See what they can come up with, get some points on the board. Today. With head coach Jason Todd, he said, from the custodian to the principal and everybody in between, they Thank were you. a part of our success. They deserved a state championship medal just like our coaching staff and players. Well, it takes an administrative commitment, not just an athletic commitment, not just commitment on behalf of the head coach. The head coach has to go and he has to get the faculty, the administration involved. They all have to back it in order for it to go. And I'll tell you what, for their debut game after winning the school's first ever state championship, this defense is shot. The first interception of the night. Mm -hmm. Jameer Willis needs to be very careful with the football here being backed up. Going to try and use his leg, swallowed up immediately. Billy Walton. Before now. We've got two Texas commits in our game tonight, both on South Oak Cliff. Malik Muhammad and Billy Walton primarily on defense. Right now the offense is operating. Randy Reese 
picks up that first down for the Golden Bears. He's an SMU commit. The going to have to make a perfect throw. On second and seven, they stay with the ground game, bursting through the hole. Danny Green picks up the first down to move the chains again. And he's running at a defensive line that has Michael January at 6'4", 320, trying to plug it up. Yeah, that's a really nice job right there. Sneaking through that hole. Four downs to do it. Dance with who brung you. Now they did there. Stood <laughs> up and driven back all the way to the 20. Obviously, forward progress will mark him down at the five. But Duncanville uh, making a statement there. I spoke too soon. Malik Muhammad at the top of your screen. He's the ESPN 300 player committed to Texas. Instead, they go on the ground. Green powering his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Bears. I tell you, Jay, I like it. That's a message. It's a message to Duncanville, and it's a message from Coach Todd to his offensive line. You just got your tail kicked on the previous down. We're going to line up. We're going to run it again, and this time we're going to score. I love it. Trusted an offensive line that's anchored by so deep across the board that it's really going to come down to not so much who makes the plays, who makes the fewest errors. Finally, some room to run for Duncanville. It's exactly what they needed for Caden. All three wide receivers to the far side. Willis takes the snap, looks that way. In trouble. And down he goes. This Golden Bears defense loads up again. A sack on third down. Butler got there first. Had plenty of help. Danny Green in the backfield. He is the lone touchdown tonight. Gets the carry. Tries to go left. Stiff arm has the first down. That's a gutsy call on perimeter at the collegiate level. Walton, quick hitter. Huge hit and yet didn't go down. Randy Reese absorbed it. That was a huge knock from the Modric Spencer. Didn't gain much after the hit, but impressive that he didn't go down. Yeah, uh, short underneath throws that get him some completions. Jameer Willis actually out of the game. It's Keelan Russell who hands it off. Caden Durham! A 99-yard touchdown for the ESPN Junior 300 running back. So you sub in the backup quarterback. He hands it off to Gravity. Good contact balance. What was lost on the handoff is that Keelan Russell has entered the game. He's got a cannon. And he's intercepted. Tried to take a shot deep, and Tyler Starling intercepted it again. His second of the night. And the Colorado commit has been a real ball hawk in that secondary. Continues the tick. South Oak Clip, two of seven on third down today. Walton drilled. His eyes were downfield, and he got lit up. Vernon Grant, the senior, stormed in to make her ears pinned back. From the own two-yard line, he does. It's a safety. What a start to the second half. Elijah Wilson got there first, wrapped South Oak Cliff up in the end zone. That is a safety. Nothing Tedrick Williams could do coming out of the back. Boy, I tell you, at the point of attack, once again, there's our big guy, 55. He's so disruptive. And then Elijah Wilson, number five, runs from the backside. The Tulsa verbal commitment. Throw the ball on behalf of both offenses. Willis takes a shot. Complete spinning out of a tackle down at the five. First catch for Zachary Turner. The freshman tight end who Reginald Samples, head coach of Dunk. Playing discipline to the quarterback, keeping the football. Hurry up again. Fourth and goal. Stood up. The second urge. Not going to get there either. Golden Bears defensive line with a huge stop. Turnover on downs. Call. The only thing separating these two teams is a safety. They've been bending, not breaking. Can Duncanville finally break them down on this drive? Hard running continues. Markel Porter on the carry, takes it for four. Oh, less than a minute to go in this third quarter. Nobody's in the middle of the field. Maybe time to take a shot. Willis does go to the air. Makes the catch, spinning out of the tackle for the first down. DeCorian Moore. So you get that plus one advantage. 
if you're going to run the ball downhill. Third and seven. Willis surveying the field. Throws a dart to the end zone. It was bobbled and caught. Touchdown, Duncanville. The freshman tight end, Zachary Turner, bobbled it at first, made the catch, and the young gun on a big stage opens up this game. The really good throw. Oh, boy, did he, did he secure it? I think he did. No instant replay in high school football. Oh, and by the way, that kid, too, is going to be. Buckle up. This is a high school football game between two of the best teams in Texas. 47 players on these two teams that hold a college offer. And boy, Duncanville responds after it doesn't go their way. Peters again. He's been a menace in the middle. His first sack, but he's had tons of tackles and pressures. He has been all over the place. I mean, you just you can't block him. He's so low. He's so explosive. That that's six. Wow. Six tackles, a sack, and a tackle for loss. And he's constantly playing. So at least you can offset some of that that explosiveness and aggressiveness of the defensive front with some misdirection. Diego Varela back out. He missed from 41 in the first quarter. Had a chance to make it 10 nothing. This one from 32, and he drills it. So that at least makes it a one possession game again. But still, Golden Bears trailing by six, and the ball is headed back to Duncanville when we come back. It's the hotbeds, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, Florida, Texas, California. You're all the way in Oregon. You're always going to be at a geographical disadvantage. Took a couple of bounces, but here's Lontrell. Turner on the return. Puts his foot on the gas. It gives Duncanville great field position. Don't know where exactly he got marked out of bounds. Looks like it's right at the 40. There's Muhammad lined up on the far side. Walton in trouble. Down he goes. Colin Simmons, the five-star defensive end, shows why. Top 10 player in the ESPN Junior 300 with the biggest sack of the night. Does a nice job setting up with a little speed and then dips. He can really bend. He's so flexible. Used his hands nicely, almost ghosted the offensive tackle. And that offensive tackle is Jordan Rowe, who's a, a projected power five player. Middle, because for whatever reason, Duncanville cannot stay in bounds when they run the ball <laughs> to the perimeter. <laughs> there we go. Just they like run that. it up the middle. South Oak Cliff. Deciding if they'll use their final timeout or not, what would you do? Well, if you're going to do it, you would have done it right by now. What uh, would you have done? I, I, I would have called it because what's going to happen now is they're going to run this thing all the way down. There's 24 seconds still left on the play clock. So Duncanville will take a penalty. They'll be able to punt it. And if they punt it to a corner, it's going to probably be out of bounds around the 10 yard line. You still got 10 seconds to go on the play clock. They'll wind this thing down to about a buck 17. Now they called it a little early. So 120. So they didn't take the penalty. I, I, I thought with you, they just run the play clock down to 117. Instead, they Duncanville takes a timeout. Yep. Give South Oak Cliff an extra three seconds. And as you said, ball's at the 30. So that's a really tough punt. It's a tough punt, but an extra three seconds could be a big deal. Now we're going to hand out our Geico player of the game right now to the ESPN Junior 300 five-star defensive end for Duncanville, Colin Simmons. Now, he's Geico player of the game. A sack, tackle for loss, five tackles, tons of pressures. His defense is going to need to come out and probably make one more stop here to make sure that He's the player of the game and that they win the game. Yes. <laughs> well, he's shown an awful lot. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what, his partner on the inside, big number 55, was a handful today. I've, 
He may not have the ideal height that you're looking for, but he's somebody that earns some college looks. There's a big man. That defense is getting ready for one final stop. It's been a defensive battle all night long, and the Panthers. Their corner. It's to Corian Moore, star sophomore, not just any wide receiver. Pressure coming. Russell, wide open, untouched, into the end zone. Caleb Kenny seals the victory for Duncanville. A fourth and 13 gamble that pays off. And the Panthers are going to win this football game. Well, they saved their most well executed play for the last play of the game. That was as good of an execution of an offensive play as we have seen from this offense tonight. Really good job by Keelan Russell to drift away, but see the pressure coming, maintain his poise, and get the ball out. You know what? Credit Reginald Samples. This is why he's one of the best coaches, not just in the state of Texas, but the country. Because you and I are scratching our heads. Why on 4th <laughs> and 13 your schedule? I think that can be a 10-win football team. Ooh, Haya. You're, you're schedules, schedules favorable as well. Duncanville continues to dominate. That's our Geico player of the game, Colin Simmons. Five-star junior defensive end. That's his second sack of the night. It's still going at it. I know it. Yeah, I know we gave player of the game to Simmons, but this Duncanville defense as a unit is the reason they won. A triple header of high school football to get your season started. College will take the main stage. Come next week, a loaded slate. Glad to help you bring football back. Buckle up, enjoy the ride. We're just getting started. Duncanville wins this Texas perennial powerhouse matchup for Tom Luganville, Morgan Uber down on the sidelines. I'm Jay Alter for our terrific crew saying so long from Texas.